voice in first person should be a revelation of the character. Each one of us has a different way of speaking, a different cadence and rhythm to our speech. Some people use long sentences, some people use short, some, a mixture of long and short. There are certain words I will use that are probably characteristic and signature words for me that I reach for all the time when I'm describing something. So when you're creating a character, every choice that you make in first person, or even in third for that matter, defines and characterizes that speaker or that, or that protagonist. So voice is really important. Now if we're talking about an author's individual voice that doesn't change from text to text, what we mean is something like we read Kurt Vonnegut because we like Vonnegut's voice. It's like you're listening you know, to me, well you'd be listening to like one-on-one -on -one to Vonnegut when you open the pages of his book. There are certain phrases he likes so it goes, okay, is, a, is one he uses in one novel over and over. So some writers do not change voice from book to book, and that is the delight that we get when we read them. Other writers like me, I will assume a different voice for every novel. The voice of Rutherford Calhoun in Middle Passage is riddled with 19th century language and diction. The voice of Matthew Bishop in Dreamer uh, taking place in 1966, has, has a lot of infusion of theological language. So, you could not take a sentence from Middle Passage told by Rutherford Calf Calhoun, even a descriptive passage, and drop it in the Dreamer without causing dissonance. You would know it's a different speaker. Same thing as you can't take anything on the Dreamer and put it in any other novel that I wrote. So I like every novel to feel, and short story, ideally, as if it was written, expressed by a different person. That's another way you can approach voice, I think.